only one place in America is able to say it's had eight different flags fly over it. Located in Nassau County in the most northeastern part of Florida, Amelia Island is a record setter, changing possession eight different times over a 200 year period. As soon as you set foot on this 13 mile long barrier island with its beautiful coastline and pristine waters, there is no doubt as to why everyone wanted a piece of it. For Abby and I, it's one of our favorite places to vacation, especially for a quick getaway, maybe even for an anniversary. If you're coming here for the weekend and only have a few hours on the island, we want to show you some of the best things to do old favorites of ours, and even some new experiences. From the top spots to explore nature and history, to locally owned surf shops, and a cool place right in the historic district where you can enjoy a round of mini golf along with a frosty adult beverage. All of that before turning in for the night at a former schoolhouse. On today's episode, we're showing you how to spend 24 hours on Amelia Island. All of that and so much more straight ahead from Florida. No better way to start 24 hours on the island than with some breakfast. Lots of top-notch spots to choose from this pop-up highlights just a few of them. But this morning, we're trying one of the newer options here in Yulee. Southern Donut Company started out as a food truck, serving up their gourmet yeast donuts with all types of toppings. This is their original glaze. You can see it's pretty light and fluffy. That is a good homemade donut. Abby selected the apple cider in honor of autumn, along with a cinnamon donut. Probably more impressed with the strawberry glaze than anything else. We both sampled all four and agreed the apple cider and strawberry frosted were packed with the most flavor. They also have a breakfast and lunch menu, which they serve open to close every day. We decided to work off our donuts by exploring Egan's Creek Greenway. This protected area of over 300 acres runs north to south along Egan's Creek. It starts near the main entrance of Fort Clinch State Park and ends south of here at Sadler Road. There's a nice mix of old grass covered roads and some primitive trails that are used for both hiking and biking. Keep a watch out for gators, bobcats, and snakes, all call this place home. To help us prepare for time on the beach, we stopped by Driftwood Surf Shop. This local family-owned shop has been serving the island community since the late 1970s. They have exactly what you need, whether you plan to spend the afternoon relaxing on the sand or trying to take on the waves. Of course, I ended up with a new pair of Olakai's. We also like Amelia Surf Company, further south on Sadler Road. It's another great locally owned place, this one near the Seaside Park Beach Access. Plus, you can purchase a go juice smoothie or coffee while you're there to enjoy on the beach. I'm now walking on American Beach. 
It was a beach established in 1935 as an African-American resort community in defiance of segregation and the prevailing Jim Crow laws of that era. Encompassing just over 200 acres, American Beach became known as a place for recreation and relaxation without humiliation. The A.L. Lewis Museum does an excellent job telling the story of this historic community through photographs, artifacts, and other unique items on display. Steps from the Ocean Nana Dune System is the tallest in all of Florida and pretty amazing to see in person. It was preserved thanks to the efforts of one very persistent lady. Be sure to check out this historic marker which tells the story. By this point in the day, we wanted a quick lunch and opted for a spot where the locals eat, Parkway Grill. Serving breakfast and lunch just west of the Ritz-Carlton, Abby had a BLT with onion rings, while my club on a fresh flaky croissant hit the spot after our time on the beach. The crinkle-cut fries were a tasty addition. As of fall of 2022, Parkway Grill is closed Wednesday and Sunday. We've made our way up to the northernmost point of the island, Fort Clinch State Park. Encompassing 1,100 acres along the Amelia River, this park is known for its well-preserved 19th century brick fortress. While no battles were ever fought here, costumed interpreters helped visitors better understand the role it played in America's early seacoast defense system. The park is open 8 a.m. until sunset year-round. We have more information about hours and fees on our website. Downtown Fernandina Beach is the heart of the community with dozens of quaint shops, eateries, and galleries. We always enjoy spending time strolling down Center Street, a good way to wind down after a busy day exploring the rest of the island. Commercial buildings dating back more than a century give this Victorian-era streetscape plenty of character. The Palace Saloon is said to be one of Florida's oldest drinking establishments, once catering to the likes of Rockefellers, Carnegie's, and Goodyear's. The bar was one of the last in the nation to close up for prohibition. Amelia Island Coffee is said to have the best frozen strawberry lemonade in town. Gotta go in and try it. While coffee and breakfast items are the staples here, this strawberry lemonade frozen drink can't be beat when you're looking for a good way to cool down. We decided to revisit an old favorite for dinner. Abby and I first visited Arte Pizza Wood Fire and Grill when it was a tiny room that could only see a couple dozen people at most. They later expanded into this fancier space and increased the options on the menu. Our last experience at Arte's in 2019 had left us a little bit underwhelmed. The only food we ordered this time was the 12-inch pepperoni, which was just as good, if not better, than what we remembered from our first time in 2007. Loved the crust, and that cheese pull with every slice was something else. Following dinner, Abby challenged me to a round of miniature golf at Gregor McGregor's Mini Links and Drinks. This fairly new and very well-maintained course is unique 
for its nice selection of elevated snack foods and alcoholic frozen drinks. My game certainly improved after I started to imbibe. You won't find windmills or crazy clowns as obstacles here. We found it to be more challenging than it looked, but still tons of fun. Before we left, Abby and I headed upstairs to enjoy the gorgeous sunset from the patio. Another stroll down Center Street after nightfall to do some window shopping, and then we popped into Fernandina's Fantastic Fudge, satisfying sweet tooth cravings since 1988. After some nighttime photography with a few of the town's historic buildings, we turned in for the night at our number one place to stay in the area. Constructed as the first schoolhouse on the island in the mid-1880s, the Amelia Schoolhouse Inn has been re-envisioned as a boutique hotel when we last stayed here, we slept in the largest room on property. This time, we opted for the smallest, the cozy classic queen room. Room number 12 has a queen bed with the inn's signature touches, including a small desk with world map, a retro-looking mini fridge, and the bathroom with stand-up shower, both much larger than we expected. The room was clean and provided for a comfortable stay. The next morning, we took advantage of their small, free continental breakfast, which included a variety of bagels, sweet treats, juice, and coffee. We enjoyed breakfast in the courtyard before packing up and heading out. There's no question we will be back soon. That'll wrap it up for this episode, How to Spend 24 Hours on Amelia Island. Our hope is this video will help you in your vacation planning to one of Florida's best destinations. For more tips and information, be sure to visit our website, chatgallivanter.com, where you can also sign up for our absolutely free newsletter, Gallivanter75. As always, thank you so much for watching. From Fernadina Beach, see you next time.